Oh, hey, it's me. Uh, hey, welcome to Side Dish. It's Saturday. It's me, Doug. Oh, my God. Denise is here. Uh, the dogs really like to see Denise. Um, so we're back. We're live. Um, today is July 2nd, which means yesterday was the first, which is Canada Day. And on the, the 4th is the 4th of July. Both of those are the are the independence days, that's what I understand to be, of, the, of, of both of these countries. So, uh, in uh, celebration of both of those days, uh, I am doing a thank you, Ping, thank you. Uh, we're gonna make Canadian butter tarts, which I've never made before, and as of yesterday, I had never heard of. But apparently they are a Canadian uh, delicacy, and we're gonna, we're gonna get into it and see what we can do with them. Um, honestly, there's not very, you, you're gonna make, you're gonna, you're gonna need to make a um, pie dough, a single sheet pie dough. So we've got a recipe for one of, one of them, there's a pie dough recipe. Uh, but speaking of uh, pie dough, we, we did a little thing last week called the deep dive, number one in our series of deep dives. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we're going to be doing more of those. And pie dough is one of those ones that we're going to do more of. We're also going to do one on bacon. But we're going to go through the whole process of curing it and turning it and then smoking it and then eating it because everybody loves bacon. Um, I wanted a platform to do these types of things. And uh, Nico asked, one of our viewers asked about bread and could I do a step by step? And so I did it. And I think it was a pretty good success. I, um, everybody seemed to a good response to it. Um, but we got, I'm going to, I'm going to put a few of those in the can and then I'll start re releasing them. So man, why am I so sweaty all of a sudden? Is it really hot in here? Well, the oven is on at 425 degrees. Yeah. Denise came in and I'm like, ah! um, okay. So the other thing we're going to make tonight, what is it called? Carmen, this cocktail. Watermelon rum punch. This is fresh watermelon juice. Carmen spent so much time cutting and blending to get us four cups. That was delightful. Um, so, like I said, you're going to make a pie dough, and I'm going to get mine out of the freezer. I've had mine in here for about 35 minutes. Just this, um, I've actually made one that is not gluten free, but I also made this one, which is gluten free. And Carmen, you'll be happy to know there is a hair on it. So um, you get to experience that as well. Oh, no, it's on the outside of the bag. Surprise. Um, I'm going to let this sit because it needs, it's, it's the butter in here and the, um, uh, the little bit of, jellied cornstarch that we put in our pie dough, which helps it keep the, keeps it more moist. Um, I want it to loosen up just a little bit, but not enough that it gets real weird. Um, so we're going to make, uh, like I said, we're going to make this filling and it's real interesting because it's got maple syrup, how Canadian, and it's, I th believe we have Canadian maple syrup. So I, I probably I could be wrong and I could be lying to you, but whatever. Um, so again, I've got the gluten-free one-to-one baking flour for this, so I can, when I roll it out, I'll just roll it out with that as well, so we won't um, we won't uh, make. So, all right. So the, it's really pretty easy. Uh, excuse that amateur move I just did. Um, you're gonna get what you also. A couple of other things you need. You need that sounds, but it's fine. Um, I think I have another one. Let me let me check to make sure because we need we need one that's a little deeper. So I think this is a more traditional one. Yeah, it's about no, this is bigger. Okay, and the reason you want the cups to be bigger is I don't want the dough sticking out the top, and you'll see when we put them in here that that is going to be a thing because as it cooks, the filling is going to rise, the stuff that you put in it. I have pecans here as well. And I'm going to Americanizing it by, I made a little, little diced apple pie filling here with a little brown sugar. And um, I'm not, I didn't doll it up too much because I wanted it to be 
the the tart filling to kind of sweeten it and give it the uh, a lot of its flavor. So I hope uh, you know I'm not offending our Canadian neighbors. And if I am, if I'm offending America because I'm doing a Canadian dish on the eve two days before the Fourth of July, uh, get over it. Um, and if I'm offending Can Canadians, which I don't even know if that's possible, I think you can, but you got to be really mean to them. Uh, I'm sorry. And I say that because you also say sorry a lot, and I, I think we should be on the same page. So, also, I want to show you, look at this. This is from the brown sugar. This is like pure molasses, uh, just a chunk of pure molasses that's in the brown sugar. It's gigantic. I'm going to throw it in a cocktail, I think, or something like that. And really jazz it up. How is everybody? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry we were not able to do live uh, chat with you last week. We were in the woods. So, you know, we didn't have any interruption. All right, so... The first thing I want to do is I need to make sure that I combine the the sugar here. And the sugar we have, oh my God, it's so clumpy and dry. I didn't put it in the refrigerator and I got it from Grocery Outlet, which probably means it was on its last leg anyways. No offense, Grocery Outlet, but sometimes that's how it goes. Hi. Is that James? Is that James Edmonston right there? If not, you got a similar name. I'm putting that maple syrup in here too. And I've got, um, I have got a lot of butter. Well, not a lot. It's a half cup, but, or four tablespoons. And what I'm going to do with it, I, I've got it super soft. This has been sitting out since about two o'clock this afternoon. And you, because you're going to, you'll see. So again, I want to make sure that, bleep, bleep, bleep. James, did you buy us four tickets or is this something that I just not going to happen? I was really, really hoping that I'd hear back from you on that, but I like, you know, so anyways, so see how it goes in there. I'm mixing this up to get it really and the, the, the brown sugar is going to melt underneath the weight of the old maple syrup. So next weekend. Oh, that's right. Whatever. I don't know things. All I'm really doing is sort of just combining to mix this up to get to a point where it's less, uh, Less, well, more homogenized together. Because we're going to get our fancy whisk and we're going to whisk it. And what, you know, what do we do when we whisk? We introduce air and that's going to be the same here. And it's really not too much air, but it will lighten a little bit in color because the, the um, butter. And again, this is really fairly easy to come together. Like I was pretty impressed on like, you can make this in an, like an hour, except for the dough. If you had pre-dough, you could use store-bought dough. I don't see why not. Do not use, you know, can't have a preformed pie crust. So just get, um, you know, dough in the raw like this so you can manipulate. Um, it's going to look a little grainy, but that's how it is. So I have one large egg uh, that plops in there. And then I have one teaspoon of um, vanilla, and then a little little bit of a interesting one, a little apple cider vinegar gives a little tang. And you could use white vinegar for this. Um, I went with apple cider because I was, you know, American as apple pie, and you know, whatever. So I went with that. Um, and then uh, one quarter teaspoon of salt. Um, what, what's been going on around these parts? Huh? Anything exciting? Carmen, we have any, we had some excitement last weekend. Mm -hmm. I uh, went to the hospital. Yeah, Carmen was in the hospital. She got the flu on last Wednesday, and it didn't really hit until we were in the middle of camping, like Friday and really bad Saturday, um, and she couldn't keep anything down. And being sick plus being diabetic is not a great thing. And she went into diabetic ketoacidosis. Her blood sugar when we got to the hospital was 612. Uh, that's real bad. And then it went down to 589. But um, Renown is awesome. She was in the hospital for what, two days? Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, so Saturday night, Monday, Sunday, all day Sunday, and half the day. So, yeah, she was in rough shape. But Thank you to all the doctors at Renown and the nurses, uh, especially Nurse Adam in the ER. He kept her calm and all that. So it was pretty awesome. 
Um, not awesome that she was there, but awesome that we got good response. Because the moment we got there, they took her vitals and they were like, DK. And they, I was like, I wasn't, I was in emergency mode. So I wasn't paying attention to what was like actually happening right then. And then they went in, we took, we went to the regular ER and then we went to the pediatric and they immediately like took us in. <laughs> so I knew. And then it, I, I can't tell you, I think like 15 people came into that room. Like the doctor came in and in, uh, people, yeah. Yeah. There were so many people in there, like, when I was, like, because when you go into DKA, like, your kidneys start shutting down and stuff. So, yep. like, my insides were hurting. So, it was, it was fun. Yeah, it was a good time. Not really. <laughs> but it just, it was, a, it was kind of a lesson for me and Amy, you know, especially because we were feeding her water and a little bit of Gatorade to get electrolytes back in, but she couldn't keep any food down. So we'd give her some stuff and then it would come back up and blah, 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 blah. And so we just neglected to keep checking her blood sugar and it just got out of control. But the doctor says like that happens a lot. Like when you get super ill like that. And apparently the flu has been real bad in these parts the last few weeks. And so they they said like, Two thirds of the hospital ward was like flu victims. So, um, so I have chopped pecans here. You could use chopped walnuts um, or raisins. Blech. Raisins are the devil's food. So I'm going to let this sit because we need to roll out, um, and I'm going to try and do this a little bit more um, scientific instead of trying to map around things. Uh, Push some things out of the way. I'm going to make sure it's dry surface. Yeah, thank you, Denise. I do not anymore. No, oh, this one I need. But uh, I do have a. I do have a just a, another uh, cup. This is two cup thing, and only because it has a really good pour spout and a handle. And when we're filling up the the uh, slots in the um, muffin tin, we want to have control and make sure we're not just like blah, 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 and having a problem. So thanks James for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe and tell all your friends that to subscribe to side dish side dish cooking.com. We'll get them there. Thanks. Oh yeah. That brings, that brings it up. Um, I was looking at our numbers the other day, which is an interesting thing to do. Uh, we have surpassed like, the total views for videos has now surpassed subscribers who watch the video versus people who don't subscribe to the channel. So I know all of you are already subscribed to this channel. So if you don't, please do and like this video. And, you know, it, it, it's kind of cool. Uh, we're moving our way up slowly. All right. So I have this out and it's already starting to be a little bit more malleable. Now, have I ever made... This dough with gluten-free flour? No. So it's an adventure. Who knows what it's going to turn out? But we don't want a ton of gluten development inside of pie dough anyways. Gluten, you know, stretches and it becomes chewy. We don't want that. We want flaky. We want crispy. So I'm hoping that the butter and the gluten-free flour work together here to um, sort of give us a flaky crust. So we'll see. We might not get it. And you know, if we don't, well, we learned something. So I'm just kind of using the weight of this to sort of get it down to more malleable. You can see it's going to crack and that's fine because when we roll it out, it'll go back together. Um, yeah. So, and I'm just going to start real slow with this because again, I don't want it to get too worked and I don't want the butter to melt too much before we get stuff going. So, oh, the, oh man, the cat has been on the prowl today. I don't know what his deal is. So I'm just turning this a little bit as we do it, hoping to evenly, you don't really need to get it into an even circle because we're not draping it over anything, but for consistency and cutting the circles out that we need to go in there, that's going to be helpful. So I'm just, these are um, one eighth thick bands that I've put on here. So I'm just going to get this to that. And I might even take some of this and cut it 
and move it to the side and then roll this out, do some, and then I found that that helped keep it even. So, whoops, now we're sticking now. So that's not good. Blah. Which means that the butter and everything is loosening up here. But So I'm just gonna give a little bit of that on the top. And you know, the same, same thing when you're working any pie dough. I keep wanting to say pizza dough. Probably because I'm going to be starting on the pizza oven, at least the base of it, this week. I do. That's probably, probably fine. It's going to be fine. It's, uh, it's gluten-free, so if I have any problems, it should be fine. Did I get it? Did I get it? That's a fun game that we used to play when I was a kid with my brother. He would, he would get that we get stuff on our face and then move it around until and, we, and did I get it? No, no, you didn't get it. And then you do it again, and until finally you still haven't gotten it. But then they go, "Yeah, you got it. It's good." And then you walk off. Oh, in that case, you got it. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm just gonna. This thing really wants to stick right here. Ugh, pie dough is a pain in the butt sometimes. Everybody. Does the gluten free make it more tacky? I don't. Normal? I don't know. I mean, it feels. I mean, it feels to me like pie dough. Like pie dough. Yeah. So you know, I'm just again, I'm just trying to get this to a point where I think it is a little bit more brittle, maybe, uh, maybe because it's a little bit absorbed more moisture than regular flour, AP flour, I guess. I don't know. I think I'm just kind of, again, these are now touching the ground. Well, kind of. So I want to go a little bit further. Now it's definitely on the rubber. So I'm just doing this and it's a little piece here. Okay. Let's call it good. So I have, where is it? Here it is. Are you in my kitchen? And the cat I know is in the kitchen, but you are. Um, uh, thanks, Fee. It's nice to see you, bud. Okay, so we're going to need this. Now, contrary to what you think you want to do here, is you're not going to grease this. You don't need to. Remember, this is butter. Lots of it. Well, not a lot. No, 10 tablespoons. So, yes, lots of it. <laughs> um, you want a buttery dough for butter tarts. So, this is a four inch round. And it that's not, that was not what I wanted to happen. So this is going to be real fun. This is why I did this. Yep. Yep, it is. Let's try again. Are my arms wet, Ted? Burnt. My arms are not burnt. Okay. So that's what we're looking for. My arms aren't sunburned. I'm just tan, man. I got, I'm tan. Yeah, that's why this week I'm going to work on the non-farmers. All right, so, yeah, that would probably work. I probably could have used the offset spatula too. but So I'm just pushing this down into, the, into this cup, and I'm just kind of, when it, it's going to turn into a weird thing, you know, it's, it's going to crumple, crinkle, crample, whatever that word is. And that's fine. Um, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna, I'll probably have to re-roll that one, so. We'll just see if I can get them out. And, oh yeah, that's way better. Okay, and this can continue, and I'll just continue to do this so you can see sort of the, the way this goes. This dough, I can tell just from, we're gonna have, I'd have to make some adjustments in the future. Because it is, it is cracking a lot more than the other dough. There's really no difference, so. Okay, so I need 12 of these, obviously, because there's 12 here. And this, uh, don't you do it. You know, go with the flow here, everybody. Just take your time, get them in the cups. Oh yeah. 
Ted, I think I misunderstood what you wanted when, where you wanted the vacuum cleaner. So that's why I, I suggested that. You want it for their Alaska house or when they move? Side conversations with people, you know, that's probably not super great television. But anyways, I'm just making, again, this is not anything that's rocket science. I'm trying to be gentle. Oh, okay. Well, that does. Okay. Okay. Sure. I got you. And I'm just pushing, I'm not really pushing it in that hard, but I am to make sure that if there's any gaps, I'm sorry, can I help you, Mr. Man? He's literally been all over the kitchen today. Um, his new favorite thing is to hide inside of the yeah. pantry. I think he's found like there's like cookies or crackers on the floor, and he thinks if he goes in there that he's gonna get them. So I don't think we're gonna have really any issues with this because this dough again, if it doesn't work, I mean it's an experiment. We'll try it again and we'll find an actual gluten free pie dough recipe and we'll try it. So what we do here, we try things. Um, oh my God, I forgot to tell you, Carmen. I went to the grocery outlets today to get some stuff and I was in the, uh, the Rainbow Market and somebody was talking about a car that had caught on fire. And I didn't realize that it had caught on fire in the parking lot of the grocery outlet. Crazy. It was like really burned out too. So. That is a bad trip to the store. Yeah. It was, uh, I didn't, well, it wasn't my car, so, but I mean, they, I guess it was pretty fully inflamed and there was a, dis, there was not a disagreement, but a conversation about like, was it an accelerant used or not? And the person who witnessed said fire, who was brought it up to the cashier said, um, he, they'd have to be pretty quick to get that done with nobody seeing it. And grocery outlet parking lot is pretty busy all the time. So, you know. You know, keep 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 it real, everybody. Cars on fire. That's your thing. Um, I'm also wearing a red shirt, so it probably tense my arms a little bit too. But yes, ping is correct. Camera always gives it a little bit of red team. Um, do you guys have? Uh, uh, if you had a choice of like a deep dive that you would like to see, uh, what kind of things would you like to see? Uh, like I said, I'm doing bacon. I'm going to do biscuits. We could do pie dough. Um, what else is there that takes a little bit of time? And pickles. Oh, pickles. We could do pickles. Yeah, that's a little good one because it's going to take that. That's one you'd have to do for a while. But um, yes. Oh man, this is this dough is getting a little bit unruly, but <laughs> we're going to be fine. I'm going to just patch it. You know what? That's the be best thing about pie dough is that you can sort of patch it together like spackle and push it in here. And it'll be fine. If it if it if it's not, well, we'll start over. I did a lot better rolling it out this time than I did with the other one. I'll tell you that much because I had to roll it. Oh come on! <laughs> yep. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen there, Ted. I don't need a red hat. I don't like the implication, sir. How is Alaska? Is it nice right now? How's the weather? I haven't talked to anybody lately. Well, nobody's really left except for Fred. Anyways. Okay. So I'm going to do, I'm going to roll this back out because we could have gotten it, but just. So apparently I rolled this one better than I rolled the other one because I had less left over. All right, who cares? Okay. I only need three. So move that out of the way. Move this, move this. Whatever that is. The ants are back. Oh, see, see how it's um like really like squished down like that. Like it's hard to, it's really hard to man manipulate right now. So, I mean, like I can push it out, but I need to be kind of extra. 
gentle with this. I could throw this back in the oven, or in the, not the oven, that would be the opposite of what I want to do. I could throw it back in the refrigerator and I think if I do this strategically, I can get basically three. It's fine, it's gonna be fine, everybody. Who cares? Evie, welcome to the show. You're, we're right in the middle of chaos of the gluten-free dough sort of um, being a bit of a butt. Sticky, it's a sticky wicket, as they say, some places. Thicker is always better here. <laughs> that is true. I agree. So I haven't he's eating the things. Hey! <laughs> the cat. He just has no regard for personal space. He's trying to have a little bit of one of these tarts before everybody else. That cat is a jerk. All right. So, it ain't pretty. It ain't pretty. That cat was literally, I'm glad that somebody caught it because he would have been over there licking, 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 and I would have eaten one, and who knows. Okay. Did I get rid of my moved it. Okay, so I'm going to get a spatula and a whisk again. Oh, yeah. I'm just mixing it up so, you know, stuff settles. There's a little bit of, you can, there's a be a chunk in there of brown sugar goodness, but I'm just going to like I said, give this a good pour. Don't sue me, Swedish chef, or Sesame Streets. What's that, Jim Henson Company? Okay, so. So you're going to take some pecans and you're going to fill up more and that's it. That's all you really want is just a little bit of a smattering along the bottom here. So you get a covered bottom, which everybody loves a covered bottom. It's almost like a mini pecan pie. Well, you know what's funny, Denise, is they basically when they said in the recipe, they were like, yeah, if you add the pecans to this, it's really... Um, yeah, it will be like a little mini pecan pie. Now, I added a little bit too much of this before, but I'm just adding this. They're softened, and I did that because I want them to be cooked when they go in there. Um, they only, these bake only for 15 minutes to 18 minutes. I think I did 18-ish. Um, so, oh my God, there's some sort of meetup. Oh, I'm so sad I won't be there. Um, and then I'm going to leave one cell blank. It's okay. That cat really, really, really is like into this. So that's probably some sort of compliment to the Canadians. I don't know. We're going to need those anyway. So, so I'm going to fill these up, and, but I'm not going to go all the way to the top because it will expand. This one is a weird shape, so we'll just do that. I have my oven preheated to 425 degrees. Um, and it's been like that for a while, which is why. It's um, and you're going to get, now I, I was suspect that this was going to fill up all of these, but it, it did. Spoke too soon. You know, it's bizarre. It's the same measurement as before, and it just didn't do what it was supposed to do. But I'll probably have to move some stuff around here. But Oh, I did uh, pour some in the others. But you can should be able to get 
What? What do you? What do you want, man? <laughs> I don't guess. He's like he's like stalking me, everybody. I'm just gonna do this one. Yeah, we'll see how high it gets, but. Okay. I don't understand why that did that, but whatever. It's a volume thing. Yeah. <laughs> you do Same. It's definitely not. Okay. This is going to go in. Like I said, I'm going to check this. Uh, in about. I'm going to put it in for 15 and check it to see if it needs more. So. But while we do that, we're going to make this cocktail. Are you ready? Okay, Kit, Carmen. You make this in a pitcher, everybody. This pitcher. This is, uh, like I said, this is eight cups of unblended watermelon. Unblended? Right. Chunt. Unblended? No, it's four cups blended. Oh, never mind. <laughs> so that's okay. We're on, we're, we're on the same page. I'm, I need four cups of this, right? Or no, I need... How much rum do I need? Let's start there. One cup white rum. Okay. Happy, happy holidays to me. I got one, right? I got two right here with the watermelon garnish on them. <laughs> one cup orange juice. One cup OJ. If you want some more rum, you could always put more rum in here. Who knows? That's why the rum is good. Yeah. A little bit of sweetness from that OJ as well. Half cup lime juice. Is this a half cup in here already? Oh, look at that. And one and a half cups ginger beer. But don't put that in yet. Oh, and how much of this? All of it? Yeah. I mean, come on. Stir to combine, and then when ready to serve, add ginger beer to pitcher. Oh, so I did. guess you do add it. That's okay. I got to stir it first. I got to tell you. It looks like pog juice. <laughs> it does look like pog juice. Wait, what's that? Is that a seed from a seedless watermelon? Looks to be. Nothing. Never. Nothing's truly seedless, everyone. And one and a half cups of ginger beer. Yes. Might just be 12 ounces. So just one 12 ounce bottle. Okay. Now it says to chill everything as well in the refrigerator before you put it together. So. Oh, well, that's okay. We need to fill the cups. Okay, that's fine. Just the cups. Oh, Denise is on it. Don't worry. No one knows. It's true. Only I do, technically. I think it, I, I will say, I think it's a C. Uh, but, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, perfect. Um, oh, also, there's a little, there's a big container down there of vanilla ice cream. Pull that out too. Yeah, that's it. When we get to that part, we'll uh, we're gonna need it because that's the other part of this that's Americanized. We have a little, you know, apple pie and vanilla ice cream is pretty good. So. It's true. Uh, our, Ted, um, Carmen's like peeling and it looks, and when I felt her arm the other day when it, where it was peeling, it felt like Pokey's skin. It was weird. Here you go, Denise. That, I mean, how can, it looks amazing. Yeah, uh, Carmen is uh, real good at garnishes. <laughs> so. I think she should have, she should go in and be a little bartender. And, Good Lord, that's so good. Mm. 
Mm. Okay. Oh my God, DV, that is a great idea. Adding vanilla ice cream to this. Remember when you were a kid and you'd go to a you'd go to a party and they'd like pour like Seven Up and ginger ale, and then they would just dump quarts of ice cream in it. What what kind of savagery is this that we went through in the eighties and nineties? It's like here you go, here you go, just uh, diabetes uh, here's in a bowl, and if you if the juice isn't enough and soda isn't enough, have some ice cream. It's, I'm not going to lie. It's one of the greatest things ever. And I'm not also going to lie that I'm probably going to drink this down and probably put a little bit of vanilla ice cream in this because, I mean, why not? It's my show and I can do what I want. <laughs> okay. So when those come out, they're going to look relatively like this. I have made these way earlier because they need to cool completely. Um, you are a genius. Um, I wanted, they need to completely cool so that the um, dough has time to reset. And I don't mean reset, you know, figure out its life, but I just re mean reset so that it's a little bit, you know, like a pie, pie dust. I'm taking an offset spatula, or if you have a side. Now this is, um, the stuff is really caramelized. So we'll see how if I can get, get this out without, a, um, without it falling completely apart. Oh, look at that. I did it. Oh my goodness. It's, I, I can tell you already. Oh, there's a little hair on it, so that's perfect. I'm going to give us each one of these, Denise, and then we can try um, each one. And Carmen will have to try the gluten-free ones when they come out. But Really? <laughs> I mean, you could try these and have an upset stomach. But Okay, so that is a good one. Oh, my God. Look at that. It, it, there's so much hair on them. Why? <laughs> you know why? It's because the cats get on the counter and they just lay around. And the cat was over there. That's true. That, the cat was also over there. So. That's hard That's why I'm giving it to you because you like his list, his kisses. Okay. I'm. I am excited about that. Here, you will try, we'll each try one of the flavors, Denise, at the same time, and then we can discuss. I am excited about this. Oh, they look amazing. I mean, and for a guy who has never made it before, kind of not looking bad. I'm going to, I'm going to do this one because it's. The nuts? Yeah. Okay. Is it bad? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Let's see, sis. Ooh. Which one were you watching, DV? Because uh, there's a... Palin's Kitchen, which or a Hot Thai Kitchen, is the other channel she has. But yeah. I really enjoy her Thai dishes and stuff. And that sounds like, oh man. Okay, first of all, the pie dough, it's the standard one we normally make. It's delicious. Let's eat the pecan one first. Oh my god! Oh my god! That filling. Is like, I kind of think it's kind of, it tastes almost like, even though there's no cinnamon in here, there's brown sugar, it tastes almost kind of a mix between a pecan pie filling and like the cinnamon roll, like cinnamon sugar stuff that you yeah. put on it. And it, I mean, it's, it, this is unbelievably good. Holy Moses. Um, so, this is going in the like top five of the things we've made. I will be making these again personally because these are. And I like the apple. Because I didn't add, I just added a little brown sugar, which was already in the mix. I like the texturing of it. I use Granny Smith tart apples. So you get a little tartness back into it. I mean, 
but let's just try the little palate cleanser here with the one. Oh my goodness. The one in the oven is, are gluten free. Those ones are not. Yeah. I think that the nut one the best gone one. It's so good. Oh my god, the regular one. The spilling along with the flaky pie dough is I mean it's buttery. Mm -hmm. It's just buttery deliciousness. Oh my god. I um I gotta stop eating that because I'm gonna I'm gonna get the diabetes if I do that. I'm gonna be some of my meds. I don't want any of it, but I mean thank you for offering. All right. I didn't get it. I, I should have gotten it. I'm just going to get a, a teaspoon. Mm. Mm. And <laughs> a little uh, vanilla ice cream in there too. Why not? And if you, if you guys, if you guys tell anybody about this, we'll keep it between us. If not, you're in trouble. All right. And then around the horn, one more time with a little bit of ice cream on each one. I don't think, doesn't think, don't think you do. You know what it actually reminds me of, Denise? Now that I've had another bite. Yes. That's what the plain one reminds me of. Sticky toffee pudding is literally one of our favorites. And I'm going to figure out how to make it. Because I think it starts like this. I also think there's dates in it, which there are. But I don't think the ice cream brings anything to it, folks. I mean, it's good because I made it, and Carmen helped, and it's delicious. But we'll do it with the, the apple pie one, the apple pie. Oh, Moses. Amy's going to be so jealous. Oh, my God. It's so good. Okay, well, we did it. We made it through this one. Um, Carmen gets to eat hers off camera, and um, you know we're gonna have chicken wing or chicken legs for dinner. Gonna put them on the Traeger. It's gonna be delightful. Um, I'm by myself. Well, what it depends. I don't know what you get back. Is it in the afternoon? Saturday. I don't know what time. Okay. Have to look. Uh, Denise and Carmen are leaving tomorrow to meet Amy, who is in Chicago for our conference. And then Carmen flies back next Saturday, and Denise and Amy and our friends Andrew and Lino are getting on a train, and they're going to Boston. Yes. So Amy's gone for like 15 days. I'm pretty sure she hates me. No, I'm not. But uh, next week, who knows what I'm going to make, because if I'm by myself, it's going to be a bit of a shit. So <laughs> tune in for that. Uh, uh, I, well, it depends. I don't. I think she comes back in the afternoon, so I'm not a hundred percent sure. Uh, but until then, and the craziness that happens, we love you. Thanks for stopping by. Oh my goodness. Um, remember that the world is crazy. Take a deep breath. Fight the fight the good fight. And be kind. Be loyal. And do something nice for somebody next week. God knows we all need it, and we love you. And we'll see you then.